do not know how things have been in your corner of paradise, but around here at Studio One, it's been upside down. And you know something? I'm used to that. Greetings. Good evening. How you doing? Welcome in to Global Championship Wrestling's GCW Radio. First off, thank you to everybody who is tuned in through Beyond Ringside Sports Radio, as well as ProWrestlingRadio.net through uh, Beyond Ringside Ustream, as well as through Shoutcast and all the different sources. Tune in radio, glad to have you on board. Uh, the Beyond Ringside Radio app for Amazon, Android, and BlackBerry, glad to have you on board tonight. Chat room is open, and I'll be scooting over that way to check on it in just a couple of minutes over at BeyondRingside.com. Like I said, Fast Eddie Lane live from Studio One. Mad Dog Dan saw you're on location this week. Lucky devil. I know where he is. I'm not going to talk about it. I think everybody knows that. <laughs> and of course, you never know, may just have a couple of people pop in and out throughout the next hour. And of course, Beyond Ringside's Back to Basics will kick off at the top of the 10 o'clock hour. Going to be joined by co-host Phil Stamper. We've got a lot of things going on, including the cover story this afternoon, the news breaking about UFC star Conor McGregor saying that he's going to retire young. Wow. Bombshells all over the place. Speaking of bombshells, I've had an opportunity to speak with our very special guest on more than one occasion um, on different shows here on the network. And tremendous to find out that he is going to be appearing in Pell City, Alabama, Saturday, April 30th. Ladies and gentlemen, the dream killer, Eric Wayne, right here on GCW Radio. Mr. Wayne, glad to have you on board tonight. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your schedule and inconveniencing me during my training to uh, talk to all these fans. I do <laughs> I do appreciate it. Not a problem. Now, let me go ahead and jump right in on that <laughs> as it comes to training. I know that um, one of the things that we've always preached at this industry, this business, this sport called professional wrestling is an ongoing classroom situation. Uh, when you train or when you go back in for, um, you know, to start working with other people, how important is that for you to emphasize to them that the training really never ends? Oh, I, I tell them that all the time. And um, they, they've they been doing a pretty good job of always asking questions, no matter how small or big the question is. It's, I've been doing this almost 10 years, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't either think about something I haven't thought of before or ask questions to somebody else or done research of my own to look for something that's uh, the day that you stop trying to learn is the day you should should probably go ahead and quit before somebody makes you quit <laughs> now i have to ask was the pressure a little bit harder for you because we know talking about second generation stars third generation stars of course your grandfather was buddy wayne uh your father was a yep. star in continental championship wrestling during the 80s now with mm -hmm. those things in place how much pressure was there on you when you decided to turn your eyes to pro wrestling uh, I felt a lot of, I put a lot of pressure on myself more than anything else. It was, uh, it was kind of weird because a lot of the guys that everybody looked up to, I didn't, I didn't look at them the same way as everybody else. You know, you had, um, around Memphis, you had Jerry Lawler. To me, that was just another guy. Like, obviously there's something special about him, but I didn't know why. I just knew this was a guy that, that worked with my dad, you know, in the same company. And, uh, there were... Bill Dundee and Brian Christopher and Doug Gilbert, Tommy Ridge, all these different guys, Bobby Eaton, uh, Coco Beware, Brickhouse Brown, just to name a few, um, were guys to me that, it, not to say they didn't mean anything to me, but I didn't look at them the same way. So years later when I got to wrestle with pretty much, I think I've probably wrestled everybody I just mentioned, um, and I actually beat all of them uh, one time or another. So I, I like having that feather in my hat, but, uh, to me, it didn't put any pressure on me because I I was comfortable with them more so than a lot of people thought I should have been. Uh, the pressure really came from other people that expected whatever it was they expected out of me. Um, but it, it was really more of a, a self self pressure situation of not wanting to disappoint anybody and wanting to live up to the expectations that really I'd kind of set for myself and that many people probably had, had set knowing the pedigree that I had. Now, also, knowing the fact that you recently, a couple of years ago, I do, uh, do believe, pulled what you called the Wrestle or Die Tour, um, where you going yeah. different different areas across the, the lower 48, looking at different areas, different bases, different companies. Um, now, I want to yeah. bring up the geographic differences, of course, as far as the fan bases go, the different crowds that you worked in front of. How crazy were they as opposed to being in the southeastern U.S.? Um, well, that, so the whole wrestler die tour started, um, 
with the idea from promoter Bo James. A lot of people over in eastern Tennessee might know him. Kingsport. And, uh, he's, he's legendary for many reasons. Uh, this particular idea that he had was that we were going to uh, renovate an old school bus. The ring would go on the bus. Uh, we broke down the ring. We traveled. We traveled all the way out to Wyoming. Right. Uh, shared in Wyoming, I think Powell, Wyoming, a couple of places. We went out there near uh, Montana, in the South Dakota, a little bit, and we were out there for about three weeks. That's how it started. Um, out there, it was um, it was really weird. We had like. We had smart fans that thought they knew everything, and then when Bull Bronson punched me in the face and blacked my eye, in fact, I just recently put a picture on Facebook, I believe yesterday or so, in the past couple of days, of uh, like a memory of when it happened, because it's been about three years now. My eye was as black as black can be from uh, being punched in the face, and all the, all the fans that thought they knew everything suddenly didn't know anything. They, uh, they look forward to seeing the fights. The comedy stuff was... Just you know, it, 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 they didn't understand that kind of stuff. They um, they were a lot different than down here, to where the fans down here they they don't seem to be as smart. They um, they kind of believe anything you tell them, and they're real gullible. So it it, uh, it was a different it was a different group of uh, fans for sure. We went from Wyoming to like uh, Nashville and Jackson, Tennessee, and down through Memphis, and then from there we went down to. Uh, Miami, and we actually lived in Miami for about two months after that. We trained in Fort Lauderdale with Pablo Marquez um, and J.B. Cool, who are two huge names in South Florida. Uh, Pablo was actually he was in WWF at the time um, in like the mid '90s for a little while, and he's traveled all over the place. And um, the fans down there, they um, they're different too because they're used to seeing a lot of athletic wrestlers and guys that look good, but they weren't as good as I was or as good as Darkstorm was, the guy that traveled down there with me, Eric Darkstorm. So uh, they uh, they were, they seemed pretty happy with everything they saw or, or mad, depending on what we wanted out of them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Now, when it comes to, when it comes down to it, I do have to ask because I followed a little bit of some of your exploits. You're not exactly um, that high on authority figures in the world of pro wrestling. You've had a you've had a penchant for uh, run-ins with a couple of them because of their interpretation of the rules and the is is that the easy way to say it or is that the hard way to say it? Um. Well, if what I think you're saying is. Basically, I think what you're asking me is if I just kind of do what I want, regardless of what rules are set out. Is that, that would be asking? one. That would be one of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I I kind of I um, hmm, this is a tough situation you put me in already. So, you know, if uh, if rules are set out, I've always heard that rules are meant to be broken and to gather attention or to kind of get what you want, you kind of have to set your own path, and that's kind of the motto I lived by pretty much my whole life. Um, for my first couple of years in the business, I pissed off a lot of people because I said things that, that were true, but a lot of people just didn't want to hear them from somebody that had only been actively wrestling for a couple of years. So to me, if, um, if setting my own path ever caused problems or was looked down upon, that's just something people kind of have to deal with. It was never my intention to, to make anybody mad for doing what I wanted. Because we should all be able to do whatever we want um, within reason. And you've always had a penchant for being brutally blunt when it comes to being direct with people. You're not one who necessarily sugarcoat stuff, right? Right. I, I, nothing was ever sugarcoated with me when I was a little kid. I remember being nine years old in Puerto Rico with my dad, and I was nine. I was a kid. I didn't understand how much everybody on the island hated my dad. And... um I didn't know that I couldn't leave the locker room. In fact, there were times I couldn't even sit in the locker room because down there everybody plays baseball, so they had pinpoint accuracy with throwing anything they could get their hands on. So I remember being um, sitting in the dressing room one time, and uh, the, I don't know if the window was open or if there's just bars on the window or what it was, but um, I got hit in the head with a rock from one of the fans because they knew I was – the only person on the island that wasn't Puerto Rican, I was pretty easy to identify <laughs> whose child I was. So uh, because they couldn't throw anything at my dad, they threw it at me. Really? Uh, there was another situation where one of the female wrestlers down there, you're nine years old, every girl's pretty, and I thought she was pretty. So I decided I'm going to go look for her because 
you know, everything's over, the main event's over, and she's got to be around here somewhere. I want to go see what she's doing. So I left the locker room, and um, probably about less than 10 minutes later, one of the guys came and grabbed me and took me to the locker room, and I basically got my butt chewed out by my dad for leaving because I didn't understand the trouble it was going to get me in. So you kind of live and learn in those situations. You were listening. But, um, go ahead. I'm sorry about that. Continue, oh, please. I, I, Oh, I was just, I just was going to say that he never had any problem telling me what I did wrong or anything. So it was just kind of the way I was brought up ever since I was a little kid. I was, if I didn't understand something, I was very quickly and very straight to the point explained what I was, what was expected of me, what I'd done wrong or what I needed to do next time or given advice. Um, The advice I was given was always very, very straightforward. It's just the way I've always been raised and just kind of carried on all the way up until now. Now, I want to ask about an interpretation for the uh, the nickname, the moniker that you use, the dream killer, because yeah. based on something that I'd heard that you said a while back, people have a tendency to overshoot the reality of the dream they're trying to chase. Mm-hmm. And yeah. when, it, when somebody gets a little bit ahead of themselves, you have no problem putting in their putting them in their place. Right, Eric? That's, that's kind of basically where the dream killer thing came from. It um it was actually a t-shirt design that um, a company here in Memphis made for me, and they just randomly came up with it. And they asked, what do you think? And I was, sure, let's go ahead and print those t-shirts. We'll, we'll use it. And for a little while, I really didn't know what dream killer meant. The more I kind of had some, um, oh, what would you call it? I guess kind of um, some insight into it and kind of some more thought on what it could mean and kind of, self-reflection, I guess is the word I'm looking for. I started realizing, and the more I paid attention to other people, I started realizing that people really thought really big of themselves and really thought that they were the greatest for whatever reason, whether they were six foot five and 250 and worked out all the time, or they were 180 pounds and they did all the flips and the cool moves, or they were a brawler that could fight forever, whatever the case may be. They, they really always thought they were the best. And, um, I've never said I was the best. I've never thought I was the best, but I've always known that if you put me in there with somebody, I can hang, and I'm going to prove that, you know, you put me on your card in your company for a reason, and it's because people want to come see me because at the end of the day, they're the ones, or I'm sorry, I'm the one they're going to remember. So if people get ahead of themselves, I'm there to set them straight. Just like a lot of people that want to see me fail, it might kind of be a dream to them for me to not do as well as I've done. I'm going to kill that dream for him also. Going back three generations, we know you make a reference to some of the stories when you were on the road with your dad. And I want to know, the road stories, do they change legitimately from generation to generation? Or is it the same case of, I know that my granddad this did this, I know my dad did this, and I get a chance <laughs> to do this now. If there, is, if there is one in particular that was passed down from grandfather to father to you, what would it be as far as road stories go? Man, something like that. Um, gosh, there's so many different ones because we, we've all been known to do some of the same things. Um, a lot of it is like locker room humor, which is stuff that we can't really go into on the radio. But if <laughs> anyone's ever shared a locker room with me or my dad or even years ago with my grandfather, um, it, um, okay, so if any of the wrestlers are listening, they know that, um, that what I'm about to say, the question I'm about to ask, um, don't know exactly what I'm talking about, but uh, there's a thing I have in the locker room where uh, when I'm getting ready, I'm uh, I'm real self-conscious about my fashion statement and my, my choice of, of wrestling attire. So there's a lot of times I have to ask people which trunks I should wear. So um, my, my father and my grandfather were somewhat similar in that aspect, but as far as road stories, there's there's always been the crazy nights of, you know, you, you hear guys going to the bars and, and that kind of stuff. And that was something that was really the, 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 the aspect of alcohol um, in wrestling is something that's, that's never changed. I think a lot of second, third generation wrestlers, um, they grew up around that. And it doesn't mean that it's an unsafe thing or anything like that. Um, but I remember my, uh, my father always told the story about being with my grandfather when he owned a bar in Memphis 
and being a child and being allowed in to smoke cigars or uh, being able to drink with someone like Jackie Fargo or Sputnik Monroe and, uh, and some of those guys from the Memphis territory. Uh, and that was that 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 was they they said that that was just that was normal to them to have a child in there that was like he was I don't know probably ten eleven twelve years old maybe even younger than that. So uh, going back to when I was in Puerto Rico, there was a time there's a bar down there called Pizza City. It was the place that Eddie Gilbert had his last meal right before my father found him in the apartment the next morning. Right. And um, they'd go there all the time. So when I went to Puerto Rico recently, a couple months ago, and for the first time in October, I, of course, had to go to Pizza City. So I had my first beer in Pizza, I mean, at Pizza City when I was nine years old. Because, again, like my father and my grandfather, alcohol is okay in small amounts as long as you're safe. So when I get down there, they have a law in Puerto Rico that if you give alcohol to a minor, you don't get in trouble. The bar doesn't get in trouble. Nobody gets in trouble. If you sell alcohol to someone that's a minor, that's when the trouble happens. Right. So we uh, we were walking distance from our apartment in Puerto Rico to Pizza City. So we would go there. My dad would have three or four beers, have some food. I would eat some food. We'd walk home. So I'm nine years old. My dad's on his, I don't know, third beer, maybe something like that. And uh, he gets up to go to the bathroom. We're sitting at the bar, and the bartender walks over and he asks me if I, if I want a beer. Like, well, yeah, I, yeah, I want a beer. Of course I do. That's everyone here is drinking. I want to drink too. <laughs> so it's one of those monkey see, monkey do situations. So they, it wasn't like a big beer. It's like one of those pony beers, like an eight ounce beer or something right. like that. So. He gives me one of those, and uh, I started drinking it. And didn't I guess some kids like they don't like to taste a beer. It didn't taste bad. It didn't really taste good. I just thought I was an adult because I got to drink beer. So uh, my dad walks back up, and he sits down, and the bartender walks over, and, and in broken English, he goes, "I no no sell, no sell, only give." And he goes, "Okay, that's fine." He finishes his beer. He goes, "Well, give me another one." So I'm drinking my beer, and I finish that one, and my. Now our beer, our beer counts off. I'm done. My dad's less than halfway. I said, "Can I have another one, Dad?" He's like, "Yeah, sure." So I start drinking a little bit, and he finishes his beer. He's like, "All right, well, come on, we got to go. We got to do TV in the morning." I'm like, okay. So uh, he goes, "We." I go to get up. And he goes, "No, no, no. You can't leave your beer. You got to chug it right now." <laughs> so here I am, nine years old in Puerto Rico at a crowded bar at let's say. One thirty, two o'clock in the morning, full of people. And uh, so I start chugging the beer. And so some people at the bar had caught wind of what was going on, and they start pounding on the bar, and they start pounding on the bar, and they're saying whatever they say in Spanish because I don't really speak that much Spanish. And uh, I chug the beer, and I go to slam the beer down on the countertop, and foam spews out of the top of it from the little bit that's left in there. And down there in Puerto Rico, whenever – something big happens, like a big move in a wrestling match, or in this case, the, me slamming the bar, or the beer on the bar, they all, instead of cheering, they make this sound, and they go, wah! And they still do it to this day. So I slam the, bar, the beer on the bar, and the whole bar just goes, wah! And they start cheering. My dad looks at me and goes, all right, come on, we got to go. And he made me pay the tab. <laughs> yeah. So Swerve. I did dishes in Puerto Rico at nine years old after two beers. It was... Oh. One of the nights I'll never forget. I had to go back there and watch like four plates, and they told me I could go. <laughs> You've been somewhat vocal about your feelings for the wrestling fans in the state of Alabama. Um, keeping things in a PG realm for a second, can I ask you to elucidate sure. on that or uh, explain that just a little bit? Oh, I, I think the fans in Alabama are, are some of the best fans in the world. I think. No matter where you come from, wrestling fans are some of the greatest fans on earth. I've met fans for the first time, and I, they made me feel like I was part of their family, but I've also met fans for the first time, and I've wondered why they don't have somebody following them around, you know, uh, cleaning up after them. Let's, let's leave it at that. <laughs> okay. For PG. But uh, Alabama fans are, you know, they're just as special as any other fan. They, um, they seem to... Um, hmm, Yet again, I'm, I'm kind of making, I want to make sure I keep this safe for you. I don't want anybody to get too angry. They, um, they have a tendency to not understand talent when they see it. So they, uh, they tend to 
sometimes cheer for guys that aren't that good, and they boo the guys that are really good. So it's kind of like Alabama fans are confused. I've noticed in my travels that there are a lot of mental hospitals in Alabama. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. I would hope not because I don't think they have like a um, like a day out or a night out for the hospital. But if they do, that's great. I would love to meet everybody when they come out on April 30th. And speaking of battle lines from Global Championship Wrestling, Saturday night, April 30th at the Pell City Civic Center in Pell City, Alabama. Doors open 7 p.m., bell time 7.30. Tickets are only $10 each. You will be facing one-on-one the GCW heavyweight champion, the Bosnian war child, the complete wrestling machine. He is known as Spiral. Now, how much how much homework have you had a chance to do going into this so far? I know you're probably going to do a lot more in the next two weeks, but up to this point, how much homework have you done on him? Um, I really, honestly, I haven't done that much. I, I know who Spiral is. I've heard of him. Um, I've heard of a lot of people. Um, but until I know for sure that there's someone that poses a threat to me for whatever reason, I don't, I don't usually ever really pay that much attention to them because usually after I've seen one or two of their matches, I can figure out what I need to do um, to make sure that they're not as good as they think they are. Uh, but I have heard a lot of good things about Spiral. I've actually seen a couple of video clips of him. And he's really impressive. I'll, I'll give him that. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to have to do a lot more um, – a lot more homework in the next couple of weeks to really before I could really give you a a, a better answer, a more clear answer on uh, my opinions on him. But I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's, I don't think it's going to be a walk in the park by any means. One of the things that he does like to say when it comes to a challenger or an or a contender or an opponent, but of course he really emphasizes it now that he is the GCW heavyweight champion, is you have to make sure to get on his level. Now. Is that is that going to be a question mark for the dream killer, Eric Wayne? Um, I almost feel like this is the part where I'm supposed to cut this like over the top promo on him, um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm 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 already above his level. So if he needs me to get on his level, I'm going to need a shovel to dig my way down to get down to where he's at. So if I need to get on his level, I'll run to Home Depot and grab some tools so I can get down there. I have a hunch. It, Go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, if that's what I need to do, I would rather him get on my level and see what it's like to wrestle. Uh, here, here comes that promo for you, by the way, in case um, you want to get ready for that. I'm ready. Um, if he wants to me to get on his level, he could really think about doing more training and getting on my level because when I come down there, he'll find out what it's like to be in the ring with a first class, second to none, third generation wrestling superstar, someone like the dream killer, Eric Wayne. There you go. Coolness. <laughs> Folks, I want you to mark your calendar and make your plans. Saturday, April the 30th, I will say this. I have watched Mr. Wayne in action on more than one occasion. And, of course, you know I work closely with Spiral. I'm going to sit back and tell you this. Two words right now. Don't blink. Because knowing the dream killer, Eric Wayne, knowing the complete wrestling machine spiral, this you've heard for years the analogy used, human chess. You've got two great competitors, one championship, one ring, one night, battle lines. I guarantee you this is going to be one you do not want to miss. Speaking of real quick, before I let you run, any message that you'd like sure. to give to the fans here in Alabama and the fans in Pell City as we're on the way to the 30th for battle lines? Oh, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> here comes that promo again. Ladies and gentlemen in Alabama, if you want to see what real professional wrestling looks like, not the guys you're used to seeing in Alabama, but the very best the professional wrestling has to offer, the very best that GCW has to offer, and the very best you're going to see in Alabama on April 30th, then I highly recommend. As a matter of fact, I demand that you come to Pell City on April 30th. You buy your tickets for just $10. Is that right? That's correct. For just $10, and you watch what I do to your champion, Spiral, on April 30th, and you come watch everybody else try to follow what we do and try to keep up with the very best professional wrestler going today, the dream killer, Eric Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, very special guest, 
one of a kind, second to none, the third generation superstar, the dream killer, Eric Wayne, right here on GCW Radio. Hang with us. Coming back right after the break. Howdy, friends. This is the Magic City Motormouth Fast Eddie Lane with your invitation to join yours truly, along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific, for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on beyondringside.com for all of upcoming show information, and of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern, for Beyond Ringside Live. Ringside Live on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us for the Midnight Black Mass. Myself, the Reverend Dan Wilson, brings you the dark gospel of professional wrestling. Uncensored, unedited, uncut, and not for the faint of heart. You can find out more about us at youtube.com slash pottyhumor or subscribe at Potty Humor on iTunes and Stitcher today. The YouTube Determined Show live Wednesday nights, 9 Central Standard Time. Join myself, the Orc of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, the Grand Design, Clyde Braddock, and the Magic City Monroe, Fast Eddie Lane, as we take you to the edge of uncensored. Yes, we go uncensored, so make sure you have your earmuffs. Ask your parents, for those of you you know that are a little young, maybe under 18, but make sure if you have any heart conditions or any mental defects, please listen because they may take effect right here live every Wednesday night, 9 Central Standard Time, Beyond Ringside Radio Network, beyondringside.com. When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget for more information on the full range of services we offer call 533 hits that's 533 h-i-t-s or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com the mad dog's house of pain the only nationally licensed pro wrestling school in the state of alabama mad dog dan sawyer trained by the junkyard dog will be your trainer you want to be a professional wrestling superstar? Learn from GCW's own Mad Dog's House of Pain. With over 22 years experience, learn from the Mad Dog's House of Pain. 205-567-6482. Start your career today. Call 205-567-6482. Extended commercial set right there. And for the, everybody listening live, I apologize. <laughs> We're having a great conversation with Eric off there. <laughs> Whole lot of things we should we could have spoken about. Whole lot of things we might should have spoken about. And a whole lot of things will be spoken about in the near future. And of course, you're going to get a chance to meet him up close Saturday, April 30 at the Pell City Civic Center in Pell City, Alabama. As Global Championship Wrestling presents Battle Lines 2016. Remember, when you're talking about it on social media, we would greatly appreciate it if you use hashtag GCW Battle Lines 2016. Matches already signed and more on the way. I'm going to do a quick rundown of the card already set. Also, by the way, let me go ahead and let everybody know. I'll start this now. Number one, cameras will be rolling for our ITV tapings. Bring your signs, your posters, your banners. You could have a camera aimed in your direction if you're not careful. And, of course, we'd love to have, show you on television sometime. Also, while they last... You can reserve ringside seating by calling 205-567-6482. Speaking to somebody in our front office, if you end up on voicemail, please leave your full name. Hey, this is Bubba. Nope, that won't work. <laughs> so please leave your full name, a return number that they can get back in touch with you if they need to, and also exactly how many seats you're going to need because I know the front office, they save every voicemail. Nope, didn't leave a last name. Don't know who they are. So please, first and last name. 
Also, please be courteous, be kind. That's all I can ask, and I appreciate it. Uh, already slated to appear on April 30th for Battle Lines, the Dream Chaser Dylan Cook returns, and he'll be facing off against the hype Chris Henry. Looking forward to that one on one matchup in a match in which no one will be safe by any stretch of the imagination. The grand design, Clyde Braddock, along with the being escorted to ringside by the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, who I actually thought was going to be here this evening. Clyde will be taking on one on one the King of the Southeast from the Circle of Disrespect and the Foundation of Professional Wrestling, Francisco Chiazzo. And I am pretty darn sure that Mr. Chiazzo is going to have Stormy Lee and Theodore Tutwiler III in his corner. May have Simon Says. May have Tommy Sweets. Um, oh, Lord. May have Shooter Storm. See, I did remember. Ha ha. <laughs> I love it when that happens. But let there be no doubt. There will be no people that can keep Braddock and Chiazzo from going at each other once that bell rings. And it may not even make it to before the bell rings. Also, in action, the mystic from San Monique, Mudbone, one-on-one with Damian Silva. Looking forward to that. Have not had an opportunity to work with Mr. Silva. And definitely looking forward to seeing him in action. And of course, what can you say about Mudbone? Tried and true, professional, veteran, one of the most cunning individuals you will ever face in ring. One-on-one, I was hoping that things would work out for a particular matchup, which was slated for this month. Unfortunately, due to scheduling conflicts and a situation which arose, uh, Johnny Swinger will now, yes, the King of Swing returns to Pell City, Alabama, and he will be taking on Joey Lightning. Looking forward to that. Champion versus champion. However, only one title will be on the line. GCW Ladies Championship. The champion, Veronica Fairchild, takes on the National Wrestling Alliance Women's World Champion, Amber O'Neill Gallows. Yes, for those who have asked, the Bullet Babe will be in Pell City Saturday, April 30. Veronica will be defending... Can Amber add another championship to that list? Will Veronica be able to turn back the challenge and steer clear of ending up in the sights of the bullet babe? This story, this, I don't know. I don't want to call it a feud. I really don't because it goes past that. Because it is so personal, it's not even funny. But it's fun to watch. And folks... Saturday, April 30, at Battle Lines 2016. If you were there for the finals of the JYD Memorial, the Brotherhood would not relinquish the belts that they claim are the tag team champions, championship belts. They would not relinquish those belts. And they still claim to be champions. Leon the Bull Stresser and Mad Dog Dan Sawyer won the JYD Memorial Tag Team Tournament. They won what is recognized as the GCW World Tag Team Championships. The Brotherhood made the challenge. No other teams involved. Two on two. Allegedly, knowing the Brotherhood, be careful. Howard C. Cross could be there. Veronica Fairchild could be there at ringside. But I do know, Mad Justice, the JYD 2016 tournament winners, will put that trophy up for grabs, as well as the GCW World Tag Team Championships against the Brotherhood. And their tag team championships. This dispute, this argument, this war may finally be settled Saturday, April 30 in Pell City, Alabama at the Pell City Civic Center. 2801 Stemley Bridge Road, Pell City, Alabama. Here's your zip code 35128. Easy to get to. 
conveniently located just off I-20 and, of course, U.S. Highway 231. And, of course, in the main event for the GCW Heavyweight Championship, the complete wrestling machine, the Bosnian war child, Spiral, escorted to ringside by the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, defends against the one-of-a-kind, second-to-none, third-generation superstar, the dream killer, Eric Wayne. Kids, I'm going to start charging overtime on the introductions, depending on how many different monikers you want to put in your name and how long you want to take it. If you don't believe me, wait till you get the invoice. And no, it's going to be more than just another hot dog and a green monster. (laughs) If we ever start serving those at the concession stand, I'm saved. But I will say this. You know, and we're going to do another episode of GCW Radio, and I think the cast is going to be fully assembled next Tuesday night. It's going to be absolute chaos because I already know the front office has been in diff- in communication with some different people, and I know that people from the front office were listening tonight as Mr. Wayne came on board. Had a great time speaking with him, and actually we're making arrangements for him to come back on one of the products here on the Beyond Ringside Sports Net- or Beyond Ringside Radio Network in the near future. Um, he actually did have a training session going on as we spoke and needed to get back in and also had some other things that he was going to, was working on at that point in time. So I want to thank him for being generous with his time. Um, we, everything's in place. Now I'm just going to sit back and say this. This is not the fast Eddie lane. Who's the announcer or the former commissioner or the commentator. This is the Eddie lane. Who's a wrestling fan. I said it when Mr. Wayne was on the phone, and I'll say it again right now. I've watched Eric Wayne. Have not had a chance to see him in person. I've watched different videos of him in ring. Of course, I work with Spiral. I've seen him live. I've seen him in 3D, in living color, so to speak. We've met. I'm genuinely looking forward to this match between Eric Wayne and Spiral. Because I think there is a very unique contrast in styles in play. Spiral is a little bit more of a high flyer than Eric Wayne is. But Eric Wayne is known to ground an air attack in the blink of an eye. Spiral, Eric Wayne both have a great technical background. They both very agile, very fluid in the ring. So I think this is going to come this could conceivably come down come down to who makes the first major mistake. Eric Wayne is fully capable of taking that championship from Spiral. Spiral is fully capable of defending that championship against Eric Wayne. This is going to be one I'm just going to say this point blank. Don't wait on the ITV taping. Don't wait for it to go out. And be posted somewhere. Come see this live. And like I said, we've still got a week and a half. There's some more surprises in the on-deck circle. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Going to run it down one more time before I head for the Radio Ranch. Once again, of course, GC, um, GCW Radio will return on April the 26th. 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern For everybody listening on the live side, thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. Of course, if you're catching us in replay, thank you. Whether you're listening through the stream or listening through download, it is appreciated. Please tell all your friends about us. The event page is up and linked on a number of different sites. We've got the full with the current lineup up on our Facebook event page. And once again, the links are on our Twitter account. I'm going to I'm going to make the move to get them up on Instagram. I'm also going to put it over on the MySpace account as well as through dot com. That way, people, if you're not on Facebook, you can still link to it and take a look at it. Let's run it down one more time real quick for the GCW Heavyweight Championship. The complete wrestling machine spiral with the wicked nemesis in his corner takes on Eric Wayne, the dream killer to unify the GCW Tag Team Championships and the 2016 JYD Trophy is on the line. Mad Justice, Leon Stresser, and Mad Dog Dan Sawyer take on the Brotherhood, O'Malley and O'Hagan. Oh my God, that's going to be a tag team war, kids. Seriously. 
GCW Ladies Champion Veronica Fairchild defending against the NWA Women's World Champion Amber O'Neill Gallows. The King of Swing, Johnny Swinger, one-on-one against Joey Lightning. The Mystic Mudbone taking on Damian Silva. The Grand Design, Clyde Braddock with the Wicked Nemesis in his corner. One-on-one with the King of the Southeast. Francisco Chiazzo with Stormy Lee and Theodore Tutwaller the third in his corner. Simon Says may be there. Shooter Storm may be there. Tommy Sweets may be there. You never know who's going to be representing the circle of disrespect, the Slimbinos, hashtag Supreme Fachim, or the foundation of professional wrestling. And the hype Chris Henry takes on the dream chaser, Dylan Cook. Already slated to be there as well. The last hero, Ace Haven, Ace Haven and Amy Haven, try saying that three times fast, will be there. Big K Holmes will be there. Jack Gunn will be there. GC, of course, GCW senior official Bernie Kawanowitz in the house. Yours truly, Fast Eddie Lane, Whitney Lee, the broadcast team, and the award-winning GCW security team, and a whole lot more. Remember, bring your signs, bring your posters, bring your banners, and bring yourself ready to have a party in Pell City. Hmm. Hashtag GCW party in Pell City. That sounds like a good idea to me. Remember, doors are going to open at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Bell time set for 7.30 p.m. Tickets are only $10 a piece. And like I said, while they are available, you can reserve ringside seating by simply calling 205-567-6482. Or you can still do it to a great degree by sending an email gcwmedia at yahoo.com. Folks, going to go and take it to the radio ranch for a few minutes here on the live side of things. Remember, Beyond Ringside Back to Basics will be kicking off in just a few minutes from right now. Got a lot to cover. Remember, chat room will be open at beyondringside.com. And of course, if you've got a question or a comment, please get in touch with us at GCW Pro Wrestling over on Twitter. Also, GCW Pro Wrestling on Instagram. Facebook.com slash GCW Pro Wrestling. MySpace.com slash GCW Pro Wrestling. See the trend here? I do believe we're also on LinkedIn and definitely on Google Plus as well. But definitely, find us on Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, and Instagram. Those are the big four. And we may end up on Periscope in the very near future. Be very, very careful. Forward progress, thank you, Elmer Fudd, is a beautiful thing. Once again, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer will be back at the helm next Tuesday night right alongside of yours truly. Like I said, Wicked Nemesis will more than likely be along for the ride. And I'm at the helm with the three of us, or with the two of us. And you never know who else is going to come on board. Special thank you to the Dream Killer Eric Wayne for hanging out tonight. Greatly appreciate the time. Folks, thank you for tuning in. And I hope you'll join us Tuesday, April 26, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. As we go ringside and beyond with Global Championship Wrestling. Bye for now.